Hello everyone, it's math time and we are going to learn about basic division. Before we begin, please make sure you grab your pencil and paper for notes. And also remember to like and subscribe to our channel. Let's get started. Our lesson for today is solving basic division. When students are given a division problem, most will solve the problem using the opposite property of division. The opposite property of division is multiplication. For example, what if you had 6 divided by 3? When you think of the opposite of this equation, you think of 3 times what equals 6. If you have memorized your multiplication table, you'll remember that 3 times 2 equals 6. So when you do 6 divided by 3, you come out with 2. But what happens when you're given an equation that's more complex? Let's say you're given 120 divided by 8. It may take you a second to think about how many times 8 goes into 120. It is best to solve these problems through basic division. Over here on the right, we have a basic division formula. Under the division sign, we have a number that's called the dividend. The dividend is a number that's being divided. And on the left, 120 is the number that's being divided. On the outside, we have a number that's called the divisor. The divisor is a number that is dividing the dividend. On the left, this would be 8. But on top of the problem, we have what's called a quotient. The quotient is the result of a division problem. Remember in multiplication, when you multiply two numbers together, you get what is called a product. But in this case, you get a quotient. Let's work through some examples. In number one, we're going to solve the problem that we saw on the first slide. So we have 120 divided by eight. So when setting up the basic division problem, we have to quickly identify the dividend and divisor. Like I said before, the dividend is 120. And the divisor is eight. So this is how you solve it. How many times does 8 go into 1? It doesn't go into 1 at all, so we have to make it 2 digits. How many times does 8 go into 12? Since 12 is greater than 8, we can conclude that 8 goes into 12 at least one time. But to be sure, it is best to write down the multiples of 8. The multiple has to be exactly 12 or right below 12. So let's list a few multiples. So 8 times 1 equals 8. 8 times 2 equals 16. 8 times 3 equals 24. And we can stop right here. So 24 is greater than 12, so therefore this doesn't work. If we look at 8 times 2, 16 is greater than 12, therefore this doesn't work either. But 8 here is right below 12. 8 goes into 12 one time. We can place the 1 above the 2. So 8 times 1 equals 8. Now we can subtract. 12 minus 8 equals 4. And we can now bring down the 0. Now how many times does 8 go into 40? 8 times 4 equals 32. And 8 times 5 equals 40. See, we have a perfect 40 right here. So that means that 8 goes into 40 five times. You can place the 5 above the 0 here. So 8 times 5 equals 40, and if we subtract, we get 0. Since this result is 0, we can stop here. There's nothing more that we can do here. So in conclusion, 120 divided by 8 is 15. Let's move on to number 2. In number 2, we have 63 divided by 3. In this problem, 63 is the dividend, and 3 is the divisor. So let's ask ourselves this. How many times does 3 go into 6? 3 goes into 6 2 times. So, what is, so 6 times 2 equals 6, and we can subtract that from 6. 6 minus 6 is 0, and we can bring down the 3. And you can ignore the 0 for now. So how many times does 3 go into 3? 
Of course, the only answer is 1. 3 goes into 3 one time. So 3 times 1 is 3. So then when we subtract that from 3, we get 0 again. Since this is 0, nothing more can be done here. Therefore, the final answer is 21. Let's look at number 3. In number 3, we have 152 divided by 5. 152 is the dividend, and 5 is the divisor. First, how many times does 5 go into 1? 5 goes into 1 zero times, so let's make it 2 digits. How many times does 5 go into 15? 5 goes into 15 three times. So 5 times 3 equals 15, and we can subtract that from 15. And this should be 0. So how many times does 5 go into 2? Unfortunately, 5 does not go into 2. That means that the quotient will be a decimal. So if we look back at the dividend, we can add a point zero, And we can bring this result down. So instead of 2, we have 2.0. And don't forget to add your decimal point next to your quotient. So how many times does 5 go into 2.0? In this case, you can ignore the decimal point temporarily. Instead of thinking how many times 5 go into 2.0, you can think of what is 20 divided by 5. 20 divided by 5 equals 4. Or in this case, 5 goes into 2.4.4 times. In other words, 2.0 divided by 5 equals 0.4. 5 times 0.4 equals 2.0. And when you subtract, you should get 0. The answer to 3 is 30.4. Let's move on to the last problem. In number 4, we have 46 divided by 8. The dividend is 46. And the divisor is 8. So how many times does 8 go into 4? The answer won't be a whole number, therefore, we need to ask ourselves, how many times does 8 go into 46? The answer is not clear. So the solution is to write the multiples of 8. So you have 8 times 1 equals 8. 8 times 2 equals 16. 8 times 3 equals 24. And 8 times 4 equals 32. And 8 times 5 equals 40. And we can write one more. We can do 8 times 6 equals 48. Now, we need to find the multiple that is exactly 46 or below 46. And the highest multiple that fits under 46 is 40. So 8 goes into 46 at least 5 times. So we can write 5 above the 6. So 8 times 5 equals 40, and when we subtract that from 46, we have 6 minus 0, which is 6, and 4 minus 4, which equals 0. Now how many times does 8 go into 6? 8 times a whole number does not go into 6. Since this is the case, our quotient will be a decimal again. So let's go back to the dividend. We can add a point zero and bring that down. So 6.0 divided by 8 is what? 6.0 divided by 8, or 60 divided by 8, does not work. Again, we need to look at our list and find the multiple that is exactly 60 or below 60. Let's continue our list. 8 times 7 equals 56, and 8 times 8 equals 64. 64 is greater than 60, so this one does not work. 56 is less than 60, so we can conclude that 8 goes into 60 at least 7 times. Let's write the 7 on top of 0. Since we are dealing with a decimal point, don't forget to add that to the quotient first. So 8 times 0.7 equals 5.6. Let's subtract. So we have 0 minus 6. This doesn't work, so we need to take away 1 from 6 from the tens place. 6 turns into 5, and we have 10. 10 minus 6 is 4, then the decimal point, and then 5 minus 5 equals 0. 
we have a 0 0.4 now. 8 does not go into 4. So again, we need to add another decimal place to the dividend. Here's another 0, and we can bring it all the way down. So how many times does 8 go into 0 0.40? Or how many times does 8 go into 40? If you refer back to your list, A goes into 40 five times. So we can write this above the zero. A times 0 0.05 equals 0 0.40. When you subtract that from the 0 0.40, we have zero. Now we are officially done. So the answer to number four is 5.75. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to join me next time for another It's Math Time lesson.